Hello, my name is Joe Murray. I'm a gastroenterologist at the Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota, and a member of the Celiac Disease Program here at the clinic. Today I'm talking to you about a paper that was recently published in the journal Gastroenterology. Celiac disease um, involves many different parts of the immune system to produce the damage that characterizes the disease. The damage occurs in the small intestine. One of the earliest things that occurs in a person with celiac disease when they ingest gluten is the gut becomes permeable or leaky. The cells lining the small intestine pull apart somewhat and they allow for um, access of gluten molecules into the immune system or also contact the immune system with other substances that may be in the in intestine. This permeability or leakiness seems to be an early consequence of gluten exposure in people with celiac disease. And the study that my colleagues and I published um, was a clinical trial of a drug that's been developed to reduce that leakiness or permeability. This drug, lorazotide acetate, is an investigational drug. It's not a drug that's approved for use anywhere in the world uh, for the treatment of any disease but it's been investigated as a possible adjunct to a gluten-free diet. That is, could it assist people with celiac disease who are doing their best on a gluten-free diet but continuing to have symptoms? And in this study, we showed that the lowest dose used did reduce the symptoms that people had while doing their best on a gluten-free diet. And these were gut symptoms primarily, but it also reduced symptoms of headache and fatigue which we now recognize are pretty common symptoms to affect people who have celiac disease. And when they get exposed to some gluten, it's very common for people to recognize that they feel like they've got you know, brain fog, headaches, malaise, fatigue, are very common symptoms. And this agent at the lowest dose tried seemed to reduce those symptoms. Now this is an investigational drug and it's also and still a relatively early stage in its development and it will require more work to show or to get approval for the use of this drug clinically and it's got to be proven to be both safe and efficacious. The studies though thus far this study and previous studies that we've participated in have shown that the drug seems to be quite safe um, and we look forward to further work in this field to see if this will be an option for people with celiac disease um, uh, who are struggling to do their best on a gluten-free diet. And I think we recognize as doctors looking after people with celiac disease that gluten-free diet is not perfect. It's certainly not easy. And many patients are left with some persistent or residual, at least bothersome symptoms. Thank you.